Good morning. Um, I'm really, really sorry that I had to cancel my coming to Boston due to a, an acute illness from my mother who was admitted uh, urgently uh, in the hospital. Um, I wanted to be here because I really wanted to share some ideas about the importance of growing um, U.S.-India scientific relationships. As you know, I've been very familiar with uh, the research and development world and the healthcare world of India as well as that of the U.S. in my previous role as director of the National Institutes of Health and now as uh, president of Global R&D for Sanofi, a global company that has been, in fact, present in India for over 55 years. I've come to understand the very important symbiosis that needs to occur on a grander scale than ever before in terms of our ability to not only change healthcare but also discover new uh, methods of prevention and, and treatment. When I uh, looked at the healthcare system in India, I was struck uh, when I visited there several years ago uh, for the, uh, about the, the extraordinary uh, level of innovation an ability for the healthcare system to adapt and adopt new technologies to provide high quality care at low cost. I was quite amazed in my own field to see the adoption of high technology imaging uh, modalities in India for multiple purposes. So I know that there is a fundamental power and a fundamental energy to create and to innovate in India. When you look at our problems in the pharmaceutical industry, and as I look at the challenges that we have, I'd like to summarize for you what I see as the most important challenges, because if we can identify the challenges, then we can place in context what a stronger relationship between India and the U.S. can bring to our ability to alleviate the suffering of millions of patients, either through a vaccine, as we are working, for example, in India with several companies, including acquiring Shenta Biotechnics to produce excellent vaccines at low cost for the, the entire world, or as we uh, work with chemists and the ability in India to manufacture uh, um, uh, APIs at a very, very uh, competitive cost, as we uh, collaborate across the country uh, to look at new ways, for example, at envisioning cancer care, uh, as we uh, look at options, if you will, to make cancer care accessible to the next billion around the world who may not be able to afford the cost of Western uh, therapies and Western medicines, and yet at the same time, they're in great need of having access to these uh, medications. Likewise, uh, we also look for leading edge innovation. For example, we've had a partnership with Glenmark on, on very, very innovative molecules that uh, we are actually uh, developing. So it is possible to see that India has the capabilities to address some of the very fundamental obstacles that exist in terms of research and development. It is no secret to you that today we're facing a crisis. Uh, R&D investments have been increasing enormously around the world, including at Sanofi. And yet, at the same time, the number of new molecular entities has been decreasing almost linearly uh, over the past 20 years. Something is broken. Something needs to be done. Something that is not a reflection of how we did things in the past, but is a break from the past. Because if we just keep repeating the experiments of the past, we will end up with the same results. And so when you ask yourself the question, what could be done differently? Uh, you have to really go back to the fundamental, in my view, fundamental obstacle that face us. First and foremost, I think it's very obvious that we have underestimated the complexity of biology, both at the basic level. Over the past 50 years, we have uncovered many of the fundamental elements and the fundamental mechanisms of biology at, at, at its simplest level. Uh, whether it be the structure of DNA or the function of RNA or signaling networks, I think we've come to understand that better and better. However, when we wanted to translate that knowledge into understanding human disease, we have not been as successful. And it's clear that the methods we've used over the past 20 years simply cannot predict what will happen in the human disease context. 
And this, I think, has two implications. It has, one, the implication that we need to understand complex biology, whether in health or disease, in humans with modern tools of exploration of biological systems. Second is we need to understand the, bio the biological complexity with new tools and new methods of research centered, in my opinion, primarily on the concepts of translational medicine. What is translational medicine? It's really the ability for us to bridge the gap between our fundamental understanding and what really happens in the human population, whether it be through um, observing genetics, uh, different genetic differences in special populations, or observing biomarker differences, or stratifying the population, understanding that what we believe is one disease may actually represent multiple diseases. So this sort of personalization of medicine, stratification of patient populations, is going to require an enormous amount of research. And this is where I think the possibility then to, to, to see where the match could be between US and in, the US and India uh, really becomes a relevant conversation. When I look at India, I'm amazed at the amount of innovation and the amount of creativity through biotech companies, through individual scientists who are really some of the best in the world. But what is missing? What can we do differently? Clearly today, you see that the R&D enterprise is a more distributed uh, enterprise, more, much more virtual than before. And clearly, companies in India, um, uh, have, I don't want to name names, but have developed skill sets that are extremely capable of entering what I call the global R&D ecosystem. And this is actually a very critical point. No one no organization, no company, no country, including the largest ones, has all it needs to master the complexity of biology and to have access to the patient populations and the patient samples that would give us profound insights into human disease. And if you really combine these two, then you say, okay, what could be the role of India? The role of India, in my view, would be to innovate, to bring new solutions, not just to the delivery of healthcare, which it has been excellent at doing and becoming, for example, in many ways, the example of how you can deliver healthcare at reasonable costs. But the next step is going to be not just to be less costly. It's not cost alone that makes the difference in R&D. What makes the difference is creativity and more importantly, the ability to tackle this complexity through multidisciplinary teams that represent multi a multiplicity of excellent disciplines but since no country has all of those available at any one time, then the connectivity between India and the rest of the world has to be enhanced. Just like the connectivity between the US and the rest of the world is enhanced on a continuous basis. So networks of scientists within India and outside of India are critical to success. The second is when I say multidisciplinary teams, it really means the ability to organize ourselves in very effective teams. And this is where I think in India, from my personal observation, this is something we could work on. What form of partnership and organizations should we develop to, at the end of the day, uh, make our ecosystem more effective? And when you think about it, you can't develop partnerships unless you bring something to the table that is unique, um, that you master better than anybody, where cost obviously is important, but not, is not the only dimension. And in this case, when you, what, what you realize is that there is a tremendous opportunity for centers of excellence that assemble the combination of skills for us to explore human disease in human populations. India has an, an opportunity in translational medicine. I think we've seen that, for example, in tuberculosis. When I was uh, the NIH director, we funded actually integrated centers of research in India. The same thing is true here. Can we develop an understanding through partners in India that have the ability to go through all the governmental regulations, difficulties, and come together in centers of excellence that we, Sanofi, could work with on very specific projects that really are of critical importance, where we each bring something unique to the table, whether it be our capabilities in biologics or capabilities in small molecules, whatever it is. 
that requires, in fact, not just a meeting a year uh, in this U.S.-India summit, but a continuous interactions. And that ecosystem is what I think needs to be reinforced on a permanent basis to be able to really uh, make a difference. When I look in the future uh, of, for example, R&D at Sanofi, we're really looking to, in fact, have what we call more credential, more validated um, approaches. And what that means is that we have to decrease the failure rate of the projects that we undertake. Anyone who can help me reduce that failure rate would be extremely valued as a partner. And that to me requires not only clinical pharmacology or better animal models, but it requires the intelligence of asking the right question at the right time to be able to demonstrate with high quality in a quantitative fa fashion what the response of a particular intervention is at the fundamental levels, not just in the superficial biomarkers. For example, I'm very interested in finding out if we can characterize the immune response uh, of, a, of, a, of a human being to particular um, uh, outside influences would be uh, organismic or environmental. We need to understand uh, the rise in allergy and the rise in asthma. How can we find better ways of understanding that? Because the tools are here. We have the tools. We have the talent. The talent pool in India is outstanding. I would say that one of the things we need to do, obviously, is that, is that you need the full spectrum of talents. And my observation has been that you know, India has an enormous talent pool in IT and engineering. I'm not so sure it's true in, in biology, and I'm not sure it's so true in, in medicine and the integration of the two. We could work on finding centers of excellence that could do that. Finally, um, I would like to, to basically congratulate uh, the, the, uh, the summit uh, for coming together. Uh, uh, I, I cannot overemphasize the need for people to know each other face to face. And uh, I will just put, put a plug here for the ability for us to, across borders, across distance, uh, to use um, uh, all of the means of communications that we uh, have at our disposal to have more permanent relationships related to the creation either of a project, a program, a small company, a startup. And that, I think, is not something that can be done once a year. So what would be the right way to do this is obviously a message that you uh, know quite well. I am trying to change that. I, at Sanofi, we've created uh, what we call an interface, what we call the intelligent interface, where I'm trying to truly open up and I'm trying to change the way we consider R&D from a, a, a closed shop approach to an open innovation environment. I think you've heard about this open innovation, but many people misunderstand what it is. In my view, open innovation is a way to enhance the ability for, of the ecosystem to come up with breakthrough ideas because today only real revolutionary therapies that bring a significant incremental um, benefit to patients is going to be justified by go government payers and payers in general. So how we do this is truly, in my view, the challenge of the day. And what we are trying to do is to change the way we approach external innovation, including, for example, the creation of de novo of joint ventures or joint partnerships. For example, we created uh, this year a company called Warp Drive uh, in Boston. Uh, with uh, Dr. Greg Verdine at Harvard, who had an idea about genomic searches of uh, DNA structures for natural product uh, or, uh, organisms, uh, that organisms that produce natural products. We had internally a, an enormous uh, skill set in terms of natural product chemistry and access to resources that were unique in the world. So we came together, we created uh, with uh, private funds as well as our own funds, a joint venture which combine our skill set, his skill set, to work together in a way that we can test and we can evaluate along a strategic research plan that will give me a sense of whether or not this approach can be revolutionary and can generate for us a novel way of both identifying targets and identifying new compounds. So you see again, the creative spark occurs at the interface of disciplines the complexity requires the collaboration of very rich multidisciplinary teams. 
These teams are not necessarily present in any one place. They need to be clustered in an ecosystem that may require virtual connections between Indian scientists, Indian R&D organizations, Indian companies, and U.S. companies, U.S. academia. That is the challenge in front of us because none of us can solve the complexity that is actually preventing us from making more rapid progress in providing unique solutions to many patients. I, uh, again, I'm sorry that I couldn't be with you. I wish you all great success. I will try to be in contact uh, with uh, many of you by uh, telephone and uh, wish you a good continuation. Thank you very much.